Conducting an investigation into the details of the case demands attention to detail. It requires planning and carefulness in the steps you take. As the expert in your field, you have to determine what you need to have and what you need to do before drawing any conclusions. For example, you have to determine what do you need to find out? What might you need to test? What might you need to reconstruct? What mathematical equations might you need to formulate? Who might you need to interview? What documents might you need to read? What software might you need to use? And what information might you need to compare? It's your responsibility to identify information that you need to know before forming any opinion in the case. Words like painstaking, methodical, meticulous, step-by-step, -step, and careful should describe your approach to finding out all this information. It will generally begin with having simple yet factual discussions with your attorney and subsequently with your attorney's client. Discussions with your attorney may lead to documents already filed in the case or that the attorney has collected from his own research so far. Your discussions with the attorney's client may lead you to finding or receiving additional documents to read or lead you to additional persons with whom to speak. As you begin to understand details of the case, you will typically collect additional information. Some of it may have already been filed as part of the case, and some of it may be accessible to the persons with whom you meet and speak. At times you will visit the site involved or make observations of equivalent machinery or systems at another site. The bottom line is that you, as an expert, must decide what information to consider and what information to ignore. A key tactic to consider here is that your testimony is stronger if you can honestly say that you personally assessed what information of the total available was relevant and what part of that information was irrelevant. Attorneys will sometimes show you only a subset of the technical information in the case. When they do that, they often undermine their own case and they undercut your likelihood of success during testimony. Another federal rule of evidence, Rule 703, demands that the basis for expert testimony must be information that is, quote, reasonably relied upon by experts in the particular field in forming opinions or inferences, end quote. The attorneys in your case are not experts in your field. So by definition, they are not competent to expertly evaluate the evidence, to decide what parts of it may or may not be relevant to your opinions. In a complicated case, you will often find many boxes of evidence to review. Generally, the attorney collects copies of evidence at his or her office. Sometimes a paralegal or aide will place on each box summary descriptions of the documents inside. Sometimes you will find an index that clarifies what documents and materials are available for expert review. You should always look through the index or the boxes to decide what material to review in detail and what to reject before proceeding with opinion formulation. By the way, the room where the attorneys store those boxes of evidence is colloquially referred to as the war room.